Welcome to the show, everybody. It's the Crypto Lark. Today, we're going to be talking about how Arizona is helping Uncle Sam collect Bitcoin for taxes. And of course, we're going to be breaking down the latest drama from the BitGrail hack and what is happening to the Nano over there. All that and more after a quick shout out to everyone who's been hitting that like button and of course everybody who's been subscribing to the channel if you're not subscribed to the channel yet make sure you hit that button down below to stay up to date with all of the latest in the crypto space furthermore this is of course not professional financial advice this is just a dude talking about cryptocurrencies on the internet let's get into it the first story today of course coming out of arizona arizona moving one step closer to accepting bitcoin for taxes this is past the arizona state Senate as a, uh, a raft of bills recently going through the Senate uh, trying to make Arizona a more cryptocurrency friendly place. Now, this is not the first place in the world where you can pay your taxes in Bitcoin. Of course, assuming that the bill does pass, Switzerland already has a couple of municipalities where this is already a possibility. However, Arizona, if this passes, would be the biggest jurisdiction where you can pay Bitcoin to pay your taxes. Now, I suppose that there's going to be a lot of people on both sides of the argument here. One, well, that's nice. I can pay my taxes using Bitcoin. Cool. On the flip side, hey, wait a second. Doesn't that mean the government's just going to be accumulating a whole bunch of Bitcoin? Not cool. Depends. Are they going to, of course, cash that out straight away? Or are they going to just simply hodl this Bitcoin? Now, I see this all as being a very good thing for the states that want to participate in this. I'm imagining actually states like Washington, Montana, and Maine would be very good um, candidates for actually accepting Bitcoin because they're hosting a lot of mining farms at this point, and it might be very useful for those mining firms to pay their taxes in Bitcoin instead of cashing out their Bitcoin to fiat and moving it over that way. That's certainly a thought. Certainly interesting to see. I want to know from you guys, though, if you had the option to pay your taxes in Bitcoin, would you do it? Now, it's worth pointing out here as well that it's not just Bitcoin that will be accepting a whole host of different digital currencies if this bill gets passed. Uh, for example, you can pay your taxes in Ripple, which seems like a good use for Ripple to my mind. But nevertheless, I'm kind of uh, on the fence about it. On the one hand, that would be convenient. I would like to not have to cash out my crypto gains into fiat when I could just pay straight up with Bitcoin. On the other hand, I think, oh, giving bit the government all my Bitcoin or a percentage of my Bitcoin. Hmm. Interesting thoughts. Anyway, you guys will let me know what you think about it down below in the comment section. The other big story we got to talk about today is the BitGrail hack. Now, this is, of course, another great reminder about why we don't keep our money on exchanges because when you keep your money on an exchange you are trusting that this exchange will not get hacked that they have top of the line security and that if they do get hacked they'll be able to absorb that loss now this is not the situation with bitgrill there had been some rumblings about bitgrill's security and potential uh, viability anyway here we see the confirmation from Francesco the Bomber. He is the CEO of BitGrail. Nano on BitGrail have been stolen. He does confirm that. There's no way we're going to give it back to you. We only have 4 million left. 17 million Nano have been stolen. Now, the last sentence here is very interesting because he's kind of calling out the Nano team. The devs, as you have guessed, don't want to collaborate. And to be honest, my hat's off to the Nano team because apparently what he asked them to do is to modify the ledger to cover his losses. Because 17 million Nano, that's a serious amount of money. So for him to come out and say, hey, guys, just modify the ledger. I can stay in business. I'm not going to have to lose a bunch of money. I'm not going to have to close my exchange. I think Nano made the absolute right decision here. I mean... If this guy is running an exchange and had such lousy security and left all this nano sitting in a hot wallet, unfortunately, the cookie has crumbled, my friend. It's very, very unfortunate for any users who have been hit by this. 
I saw a Reddit post with some guy is contemplating suicide because, you know, uh, he's heavily invested in Nano and he had a bunch of Nano sitting over there on BitGrail. And of course, it's gone now. Look, guys, never do anything like that. It's at the end of the day, it is just money. You will always get more money in the future. Never, never hurt yourself or anyone else because you know, you get hacked or something like that. It's just not worth it. As angry as you might be in that situation, as desperate as you might feel, there will always be another opportunity. That being said, take charge of your own security. When you outsource your security to an exchange, this is the inevitable result. Unfortunately, it keeps happening, guys. Now, the team over at Binance have come out and said they are in contact with the Nano team working with them to make sure that none of the stolen nano gets deposited over on Binance. Of course, they're helping to watch to make sure that doesn't happen. It will be difficult moving forward. Obviously, it's quite hard to track that once it starts to get moved around through all kinds of different addresses, but hopefully they can um, at least seclude that nano. But 17 million nano, that's a lot of nano. To put that in perspective for you guys, that is... There is a max supply of 133 million. So this is about 12.5% of the total supply of Nano. That is absolutely crazy. Now, I guess we're going to have to see what happens to that in the end. You know, will this simply get filtered back through and this guy will be able to cash out millions and millions of dollars? I hope not. I really hope not. Now, you can see here... Let's guess when the hack happened. Oh, right there. There we go. Or the news of the hack happened anyway. You can see a massive drop off in the price of Nano. Well, not too massive. It only dropped by a couple of dollars, but still, that was quite a substantial uh, cliff that it went over there. Now look, guys, Nano's got an online wallet. It's got a desktop wallet. No excuse to be leaving it all, sitting around on an exchange. I, I know that a lot of people are worried about their own personal computer security, and that is something to be worried about as well. It, these are digital currencies. There are hackers out there that realize there are all these chests of gold sitting around. They just need to put in a little bit of effort and hack through and get them, and then they can have millions upon millions of dollars worth of digital currencies. Of course, I think in a situation like this where they've stolen such a huge amount of digital currency, it will be really hard for them to cash out if they were stealing $20,000 worth of Ethereum or $100,000 worth of Ethereum would probably be pretty easy for them to get away. Not that I'm trying to give advice to hackers here by any means, but nevertheless, this I think will be a difficult thing for them to try and liquidate. Anyway, be safe out there, guys. Long live the blockchain, and peace out till next time.